Hey guys, welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna be looking at isotope calculations. And then stick around to the very end where we're gonna do quite a complicated question that they love to ask in exams, where you're gonna have to do a bit of algebra to try calculate. And you're gonna end up with a weird calculation uh, where you have to solve for x. And they love asking that in exams. Okay, but I'll give you that one towards the end. I first wanna teach you the basics. Now, something weird I want to show you. Um, so in previous lessons, we've been talking about these numbers, right? And we said the biggest number is always the mass number, and the, this one is the atomic number. If some of you are thinking that I'm doing this the wrong way around right now, it's because you are thinking of something different. You are thinking of the A, Z, X notation. In this notation, it's really weird, but this is then the mass number, and this is the atomic number. Okay, but that's different to on the periodic table. Okay, so what's really interesting, so for example, is that this one here, uh, beryllium, has a 4 and a 9. So that means that um, if we had to look at how many protons and neutrons it has, we would see that um, we know that proton is the same as the atomic number. And so that means it has four protons. Then we know that the mass is equal to proton plus neutron. And so the mass is going to be nine. The number of protons we just said is four. So the number of neutrons, if you had to calculate that, would be nine minus four. And so the number of neutrons would be five. Okay? So that's great because... That makes sense. But then what about this? How can we have a mass number of 35.5? The number of protons for this one would be 17 because that's the atomic number. But the neutrons, you would then say 35.5 minus 17, and that would be 18,5. But that is not possible. How can you have half of a neutron. How can you have 18 and a half neutrons? We only get a whole amount of neutrons. You can't have half of a neutron. So something's a bit weird, and that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. So before we go talk about the reason why this is 35.5, I want to talk to you about something else. Let's say you wrote two maths papers, okay, or well, you wrote two maths exams. Um, let's say on the, let's say the, the, the first exam, you got, uh, 70%. And then the second exam, you got 90%. But the teacher says that this exam is going to be worth. So we'll say that the weight of this one is, uh, 80%. So this one contributes 80% to your term mark, whereas this one is only going to contribute 20% of your term mark. Okay, so 80% of term mark, and then this one's going to contribute 20% of your term mark. So my question then to you would be, what is your exam, what is your report going to say? Is it going to be a number that is closer to 70? Or is it going to be a number that is closer to 90? Well, it'll definitely be closer to 70, because this exam has a weight of 80%. So it counts 80% of your whole report. This one, maybe this, this one was a little bit too easy. So the teacher only lets it count 20% of your term mark. So the way that you would calculate this is you would do the following. Now there's different ways of calculating it, but I, th I think most learners prefer this one. You're going to take these two numbers and you're going to multiply them together. Then you're going to add that to these two numbers multiplied together. And then you're just going to divide by 100 because of the percentage. Okay? And if you had to go calculate that, you get 74% on your report. And that's what we said. We said that the marks are going to be closer to this one because this one counts more. Okay. Now, what if we changed it so that, what if we changed it so that this one counts 30% and this one counts 70%. Okay. It has to count 100% together. Okay. So then if you had to go calculate it, you would say 70 multiplied by 30 plus 90 multiplied by 70 over 100. 
Now we would expect that your mark should be closer to 90%. Ooh, now you get 84% on your uh, report. What if I said instead that this one's gonna count half and this one will count half? Well, then we should expect your average to be somewhere in between those numbers, like exactly in the middle of those numbers, okay? And that should be 80, but let's go make sure. So you're gonna say 70 multiplied by 50 plus 90 multiplied by 50, and you're gonna divide that with 100. And look at that, you get right in the middle, 80%. Okay, so let's talk about this 35.5. So in real life, you get two types of chlorine. If you had to go look in nature, there are two types. One of them is, we call it chlorine 35, and the other one is chlorine 37. Now chlorine 35 would be, um, on the periodic table, it would be uh, 17 CO35, and then this one would be 17 CO37. So can you see that the number of protons are exactly the same, but the mass numbers are different? So these are definitely isotopes, because if we work out the number of protons and neutrons here, and the number of protons and neutrons here, this one has 17 protons, this one has 17 protons. Now to work out the neutrons, you must always take your mass number, because remember your mass number is your protons plus your neutrons. So if you say 35 equals to 17 plus n, then n would be 18. If you had to do the same here, you would get that n is 20. So these are isotopes. Isotopes have the same amount of protons, but different amounts of neutrons. Okay. So in real life, did you know that there is, um, there's more of this one than this one? Scientists have been able to prove that this one composes 75% of all of the chlorine you can find in real life, whereas this one, there's only 25, this one's only a 25% abundance. So to work out the overall mass, you can just take the mass multiplied by 75 plus the mass multiplied by 25 over 100, and we should expect that the overall average will be closer to this number, just like I showed you with your exam papers. Now, if you had to go do the calculation, you would end up with 35,5, and that is why we have this number on the periodic table. It doesn't mean that there are 35, or it doesn't mean that there's half a neutron. What it means is that if you had to go find chlorine in real life, in nature, you would most of it would be this one, and then the other 25% would be this one. So if you add up the average, you would see that the average is about 35.5. So here's an example that I have. So here's an example that I have. Okay, so remember in the previous slide I showed you that um, sometimes you get isotopes, but I only used two examples, well, I only used two different Isotopes, I use CL35 and CL37. When I showed you the maths exam, I used maths paper one and maths paper two. But we can have three isotopes, that's also fine. Okay, so here they want you to calculate the average mass. So the first isotope has a mass of 40 and it has a 20% abundance. What that means is the 20% is like the weight. Okay, here we have an abundance of 50. Here they don't give us the abundance, but the abundance is easy to calculate. Um, we know that in the previous example where I showed you um, the maths exams, okay, they're not there anymore. If one of them counts 20%, then the other one has to count 80%. Um, if one of them counts 70%, then the other one has to count 30%. These must always add up to 100. Your abundance must always add up to 100 or your weighting must always add up to 100. So um, if this one's 50%, this one's 20%, then that's already 70, then this one's abundance is 30%. Now we can just go use our formula that I showed you, where you always have 100 at the bottom, and then you just multiply these together. So you just say 40 multiplied by 20 plus 50 multiplied by 50, and then you're just gonna do the third one, plus 60 multiplied by 30. Go ahead, work that all out. And this one's relative, or sorry, this one's uh, mass would be 51. So that is the average mass. So some of it is 40, some of it is 60, but um, the average 
is around 51. Okay, we're gonna do one more complicated kind of example and then we're done. So here's quite a challenging example. They like to ask this one in an exam. So they tell us that the average isotope mass of an element is 33. Okay, so that's like the final answer. That's what the overall average is, okay? Then the first isotope has a mass of 30, but we don't know what its abundance is. And the second isotope has a mass of 40, but we don't know what its abundance is. The question says, determine the abundance of isotope one. Okay, so the final answer is 30. So you know that formula that I showed you where we usually say over 100? Well, we know that the, the answer needs to be 33. What we can do is we can make the abundance of this one x, then this one would be 100 minus x. Why do I say that? Well, if this one is 40, then this one is 60. If this one is 30, then this one is 70, which is the same as 100 minus 30. If this one is 10, then this one is the same as 100 minus 10, which is 90. So if this one is x, then this is 100 minus x. And now we can just go use our formula. So we can say 30 multiplied by x plus 40. Now this one must go in brackets, 100 minus x. There we go. So what we can do now is we can just go multiply this top part out. So that'll become 30x plus 4,000 minus 40x. So you see I just multiplied the 40 inside there and then that's going to be over 100 and then that's going to be equal to 33. The next thing I would do is I would take this 100 and I would multiply it over. So you would end up with 30x minus 4000 minus 40x equals to 3300. Then I'm just going to try solve. Plus 4000 minus 40x equals to 3,300. I'm then going to take the 4,000 to the right and then put these two together. So 30 minus 40 is negative 10 and then 3,300 take away 4,000. So we end up with negative 10x equals to negative 700. And so if you divide both sides by negative 10, you would end up with x is 70. Okay, so the abundance of this one must be 70% and then the abundance of this one would have to be 30% and that is how you would get the answer for a question like that.